It's time for our responsive reading, and uh, I see some new faces out there. So for those who don't know, this is a weekly practice that we do together here at Beacon Church each week to consider and declare together the scriptural truths that unite us as believers in Jesus Christ and followers of him. Lately, we've been talking about God's law. We've been talking about the Ten Commandments. Uh, We've been discussing how God's law is not simply arbitrary or uh, just, just um, fabricated, given, given to people just to follow for, for some reason or no reason. No, God's moral law is eternal. It is related to his character, his goodness, and his holiness. And this week, our responsive reading question is, now having discussed God's law, what it means, the question is, can anyone keep the law of God perfectly? Is that what it says? Yes. If you've been uh, following along with our responsive reading questions over the last six weeks, you should be now equipped to answer this question by comparing God's law with your own thoughts, words, attitudes, and actions. Over the last six weeks, we've seen that God's moral law is absolute and real. It accords to his holiness and his goodness. It is not just relative or arbitrary, like I said in the introduction. Uh, We've looked at scriptures where Jesus taught that the law extends to our thoughts, words, and attitudes. Uh, That is um, a very well-known passage in the Sermon on the Mount. And uh, it's it's not just limited to our actions, things that we think, the way that we uh, consider things in our hearts, the, the, the attitudes that we have, those can be either right or they can be sinful. Studies have shown that most people consider themselves more moral than the average person. That's interesting, isn't it? And those studies have found the same things when they conduct those studies in prisons. So that's people comparing themselves to other people. They put themselves on some kind of bell curve. But what about God? What if you compare your actions, your thoughts, your attitudes to God's law and the holiness of God? If we think rightly about God's law and about the things that we do and say and think, we no longer have any excuses. Sometimes we're tempted to say things like, who hasn't told a little fib? Or who hasn't had those little thoughts? The answer is implied. We know that everybody has. But when we're aware of God's law, our own experience tells us nobody can satisfy his law perfectly. Consider Jeremiah 17, 9. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately sick. Who can understand it? Romans 3, starting in verse 11. None is righteous, no, not one. No one understands, no one seeks God. All have turned aside. Together they have become worthless. No one does good, not even one. Romans 3, 23. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. It's true, isn't it? God's word confirms what we all must admit if we truly understand God and his law. Each of us are lawbreakers. What hope does a lawbreaker like me have? 1 John 1, verse 9, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. Acts 3.19, repent then and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out, that times of refreshing may come from the Lord. Matthew 9.13, but go and learn what this means. I desire mercy, not sacrifice, for I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners. Our sin, our breaking of God's law, does not disqualify us from receiving God's mercy. Like Jesus said in Matthew chapter 9, he has not come to call the righteous, but sinners. If our deeds qualified us, if our good actions qualified us to be recipients of God's mercy, it wouldn't be mercy, would it? God is calling each of us to repent, to turn from our sin and receive his mercy. God's mercy is possible because one man did keep the law of God perfectly the man Jesus Christ, fully God and fully man. He lived a life of perfect obedience and paid the penalty for our sin. 
he suffered God's wrath against sin as he died on the cross. His righteous acts will be attributed to those and cover those who believe and trust in him. The sinful acts of those who trust in Jesus Christ are transferred to Jesus Christ, and he is paid the penalty, the, the, what is due, the natural consequence of sin, which is death and the wrath of God. So as we respond to this question, let's put our hope in Jesus Christ, the Son of God, who became a man and did keep the law of God perfectly. I invite you to stand and join me in responding. Can anyone keep the law of God perfectly? Since the fall, no mere human has been able to keep the law of God perfectly, but consistently breaks it in thought, word, and deed. Let's pray. Lord, we admit that our thoughts, words, and deeds fall far short of your standard of perfect holiness. Lord, we admit that many of our thoughts, words, and deeds are offensive to you. Lord, these, these things, you, you cannot bear the presence of sin, Lord. You hate sin. Lord, we admit our need, that we are unable to change ourselves. We thank you for sending your Son to die, to pay the price for our sins. We praise you for changing our hearts. Lord, I pray that we would depend on the righteousness of Jesus Christ daily. Lord, that we would not depend on our own righteousness. And Lord, I pray that we would be quick to repent. Lord, that we would be a people who make a habit of practicing repentance, Lord. That our sin would grieve us as it grieves you. Lord, I thank you for your sanctification, um, which as, as we grow in this Christian life, Lord, that we, we grow in holiness. We praise you for that. And we thank you that that work will be complete in us at the second coming of Christ, Lord, when he calls his church to us, Lord, when we are resurrected into, um, into our glorified bodies, Lord, that sin will be no more in us. We, we thank you for that. Amen. We're going to take a five minute.